Hello, nice to meet you. My name is Rafael Stefan. I'm a participant of Paper Competition of Pocketech Indonesian Commitment Work 2019. So today I'm going to present my research paper about simulation of the configurable planar input F antenna for 5G technologies. So in this presentation, I'm not going to explain about the 5G technology itself because I'm going to focus on the antenna. So let's get started. First, to accommodate 5G, an antenna is actually needed because antenna is like the essential part of wireless communication. It's like the first interface that connect a device to another device. So for 5G itself, the antenna needs to compact in size because it will be mounted at the back of smartphone and then it needs to be low profile but easy to fabricate and has low cost production and then it needs to work at 5G frequency. So actually several countries already did some research to find a suitable frequency for 5G. It's including 3.5 GHz and 4.8 GHz. You can find the source at 5G Spectrum Public Policy Position released by Huawei. Uh, it's a good source. You can find the general things about the 5G policy. Yes, I, re I recommend you to read it to find more about the 5G itself. So, the antenna I'm going to design is actually taking the shape of planar input F antenna or PIFA antenna. It's a common, commonly used antenna for mobile devices because it has several advantages like its low profile, it's compact in structure, it has compact structure and then it has good gain and has low radiation at the bottom side. So for the low radiation, it's actually safer for us, for the user, because like when we use a smartphone, this is the the bottom side that face our skin. So because it has low radiation, it will be safer for us to use this kind of antenna. So uh, like I already said before, that I'm going to design the antenna at two different frequencies. First is 3.5 GHz and then 4.8 GHz. So to achieve this, I'm going to use the reconfigurable antenna. So by using a switch, I'm going to change the parameter of the antenna. So in antenna theory, uh, by changing the parameter of the antenna, we can actually achieve different kind of frequencies. So in this case, for my antenna, I'm going to change the total size of the patch so it will work at two different frequencies. So for example, if the antenna has a, a bigger size, then it will work at the lower band frequency. And when the antenna has a smaller size, it's going to work at the higher frequency. So by using a switch, I'm going to change this parameter. I'm going to explain it later. So the switch I'm going to use is actually a pin diode. It's a switch for radio band or for radio frequency. Uh, it's actually small in size, so it's it's really suitable for this antenna. So this is the design of my proposed antenna. So you can actually see the patch view. It has two main parts. The first one is the bigger one, I call it the main patch, and then the second one, the V-shaped patch, I call it the extended patch. So you can see the blue line there, it represents the diode, a pin diode. So by placing this pin diode, I'm going to connect both this patch. So when the diode is in on mode or is active, then the total patch of the antenna is actually the main patch plus the extended patch. But when the diode is off or it's not in active condition, the patch is actually only the main patch itself because the extended patch is actually disconnected from the main patch. 
So by doing this in diode on and off, I'm going to shift dual frequency for my antenna. So you can see the total size for my antenna is actually only 30, 35 millimeter in width and 65 millimeter in length and 5 millimeter in height. So it's actually a small antenna that is suitable for uh, mobile handset. So this is the simulation result. So from the graph you can see that this is the return loss of the antenna. So return loss is like the amount of power that flown to the antenna that is actually reflected back from the antenna to the transmission line. So for the better so this is the simulation result. As you can see from the graph, it's the return loss of the antenna. So return loss is actually like the amount of power that go into the antenna, but is actually reflected back from the antenna back to the transmission line. So the lower the return loss, it means better because it means like less power will be reflected back from the antenna and it means more power will be received by the antenna so for your information for antenna design minus 10 db is actually the top limit of the return loss so more than 10 db is considered as bad result because uh, it means more than 10 percent of the power is actually reflected by the antenna itself so less than minus 10 db is good and from the graph you can see that I bet minus 39 db and minus 40 db which actually less than 1% of my power that is reflected by the antenna and it means more than 99% of the power is actually received by the antenna itself so the bandwidth of my antenna is 562.7 MHz for 3.5 GHz and 1.1255 MHz for 4.8 GHz and the total bandwidth is 1.688 GHz for both frequencies and it's actually a wide band a group it's good because an antenna is considered a wide band antenna if it has a more than 1 gigahertz wide band and it means that my antenna is actually a wide band antenna and it's good for 5G implementation and then you can see that this is the radiation pattern of the antenna uh, like I said before that if antenna has the advantage of having low, lower radiation at the bottom side and from this graph you can see that the radiation is mainly focusing on the top side of the antenna and the, and the bottom side is actually having a low radiation so it's good for the user to use this kind of antenna as you can see for both frequency it has low radiation at the bottom side and then we go to the far flip simulation so it's like the radiation, radiation pattern but at 3D dimension, 3 dimension I mean. So you can see that from the far field, the antenna mainly focusing its radiation at the top side. As you can see from the graph, it's represented by the dark, dark orange and yellow color. And at the, at the bottom of the antenna, it's actually having a low radiation which is represented by like the light orange and yellowish color and for both, for both frequencies you can see and it's actually a good thing for the antenna itself so uh, maybe that's it from the simulation result so the conclusion of my paper actually to design a reconfigurable para infrared antenna that can be used for 5G technology that work at 3.5 GHz and 4.8 GHz 
So the aim of the paper is to create an antenna that can change its parameter so the antenna can switch from low band frequency to high band frequency and vice versa. The antenna produce a good written loss which is minus 29 dB and minus 40 dB at both frequencies and it also has a blind wide bandwidth which is about 1.688 GHz. So the future work, for future work, I hope that the design can be fabricated and measured to compare the measured one with the simulation. It also can be used to analyze the effect of the thin diode in the measurement. So maybe that's it for me, because I'm limited to the time. I only can explain like this. I hope I can give you some insight of antenna design. And thank you very much. See you later.